Hello, everybody, and welcome. I'm Kathy Flaherty. I'm a principal at Matthews, Carter & Boyce. For the past 75 years, MCB has been honored to be a trusted guide, providing sophisticated business advisory services, audit and assurance, tax planning and compliance, outsourced accounting, and employee benefit, benefit plan consulting. We've earned a reputation for doing more than just keeping the books and have become known as strong, proactive partners dedicated to our clients, employees, and community alike. And we invest in helping each other adapt and grow. Thank you for joining us today. We've been hosting our Women in Business event for several years and have presented on a variety of timely topics. We're excited about today's event and our topic of the business of you, prioritizing self-care in a busy life. We look forward to a great presentation from our featured panelist, Sonia Kovis, owner of Insight Wellness and Coaching. However, to start, let's get a few logistic items out of the way. The presentation will be a conversation format where we will ask Sonia a series of questions and she will share her experiences and insights. But we don't want you to lose out. We've allotted time to ask Sonia questions from the audience. So please submit your questions via the chat feature during the presentation. We also would like to know from your, the participants your own personal tips and tricks that have worked for you throughout the years as you embark on this journey of self-care. So please enter into the chat feature any tips. And as at the end of the program, we will share those tips as well. So two things for you to do. Enter your questions into the chat and enter any tips that you may have for us into the chat. Right now, what I would like to do is introduce Chris, who will be our moderator for the event. So Chris, take it away. Thank you, Kathy. Hello, everyone. My name is Chris Spilly, and I'm really excited to be here with you all today and with Sonia Kovas, our special guest. Uh, we've, had, we've covered so many great topics in our Women in Business series, but I think we can all agree that self-care is a topic that we really can't spend enough time talking about, right? It's so important. So um, without further ado, I would love to welcome Sonia and um, first have her start by telling us a little bit more about herself and her work so that we can learn more about you. Sonia, welcome. Oh, Sonia, I think you have to unmute yourself. There you go. Did it. <laughs> uh, thank you for the reminder. Um, thank you, Chris. Um, a little bit about me. Okay. Um, I, well, like many of you, I am a mother and I'm, um, I'm a wife. I'm a three-time entrepreneur and um, I'm also an only child. So that's only significant, significant because I have found myself my entire life with my best friends being part of gigantic families. And that's significant because it's that fascination with and of the dynamics of the people and the personalities in the families um, and all the stories they tell at the table that I love. It's, but what's really amazing is how each one of those people at the, at the table is perceiving this story that's um, that's being told, right? They all they all see it differently and they're fighting over it. They're like, no, that's not how it went. And I've always been fascinated by that. And I think that's kind of what I love about coaching because I mean, we all create our own stories from all the things that have happened in our own lives, right? Um, and And those stories are what allow us to create something awesome, right? We believe something about ourselves and we go forth and we do it, or sometimes it can hold us back. So that's where coaching comes in. And um, it's, it's kind of redefining the stories that we talk about. And so if we're looking to do some self-care, uh, sometimes it's that story that's holding us back or keeping us back. Um, but you asked me, you asked me about me. So I'm, I'm going in, I'm going too far. Uh, so let me tell you a little bit about my experience. I've been doing this for 25 years. Uh, I created wellness programs for large corporations. I have consulted in the medical realm for a concierge company and their patients for 12 years. Loved that. Uh, I do a lot of private one-on-ones and online programs several times a year for specific things. 
So that's kind of the gamut, big, big to small. Um, I think I'm proudest about, of all those things, I'm proudest of getting people out of their box, right? And, and getting them to create new habits and stay consistent with them. You know, that's, that makes them have happier, healthier, and more joyful lives. Um, on my website, you can see all my creds, right? I'm certified in group fitness and personal training and nutrition and yoga and um, soon to be a men menopause specialist, which I'm extremely excited about for myself and perhaps for you guys. Great. We'll talk about that a little bit more later because that's a topic near and not so dear to my heart. So, <laughs> so let's just jump right in, Sonia, um, with our first question, which is, um, we're going to, you know, what, it, what does self-care mean? Um, you know, we were talking about self-care today, right? Mm -hmm. um, it means different things to different people. Sure does. Um, but how, how do you define self-care? Let me get my little screen up here and help you. Screen up uh, and let's get started. Here we go. How do I design divine self-care? Um, <clears throat> well, I think it's different for everyone. How do you define it for yourself? I think that when I think of self-care, I think of how can I take care of myself in a way to reduce stress? That's It's like reducing stress is the first thing that comes to my mind. I think that's the first thing that comes to most of our minds. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yep. Um, I like that. I think that's the best thing. Stre you know, because stress is like like a dashboard light on a car and it's blinking at you and it's like, I'm feeling out of balance. I'm not feeling good at all. You want to pay attention to me? And if we don't, it can kind of run away. Our health can run away with us. So stress is probably the most important um, part of relieving and, and taking care of our taking care of ourselves. Um, a lot of people think that self-care is silly because, you know, oh, I want to go to the spa or I want to do this or that. But if that relieves your stress, it's not silly, is it? So how we do it can be super different as well. We might feel it differently and it might look differently. Ultimately, I guess if you're going to ask me my definition, it's learning to tune into yourself and, um, you know, take care of yourself from the inside out. Yeah. It's to create intentional uh, practices that bring you joy. Yeah. In essence, it's self-love because we are the priority. We have to put our own masks on first, like they say in the airplane, right? Um, that's the tricky part, though. I think that's the tricky part is the prioritization, figuring out what it is we really want. Here, I'll, I'll give you an example. Um, so yeah, self-care is love. And um, we, we have all these realms that we could take care of ourselves in, right? Um, the priorities the priorities are the biggest one. And 64% believe that self-care can boost their confidence. 64% of people know that, right? Yet a third of us don't take the time or feel guilty when we do. Um, Self-care, the National Institute of Mental Health says that self-care practitioners are 33% more happy, more energetic, more productive. And here's the big one. They have less pain. So there's definitely a, like a connection, right? Between self-care and your body, your body and your mind being put together. I have a question. Um, if you're trying to prioritize self-care, if you're thinking about the whole gamut of people, who do you think spends more time on self-care, single or married people? Spends more time on self-care, single people. Yep, you're right. Yeah. Okay. okay. Uh, yeah, good job. Um, <laughs> what about staying consistent with self-care? Who's the most consistent? Men or women? Oh, for sure, men. <laughs> right? Yeah, because as women, we're conditioned, I think, sadly, sometimes that, you know, if you spend too much time on self, self care, that's selfish. I think as women, we're sort of, we're, we're nurturers, we're supposed to take care of everyone else. Right? 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 Yeah. And, you know, that that is a stigma. 
that we're getting over. Um, how about who feels more guilty taking me time, parents or non-parents? Oh, parents for sure feel guilty about everything. <laughs> Been there, done that. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. So we're we're here today to change that, right? We are we are gonna get this community together. We're big, and that's a big part of self-care is having a community, having a like-minded group of people who want to do the same thing that you guys, we've all gathered these people here together. So I'm so pleased for that. So um, you're giving some tips to prioritize self-care, and we can't yeah. wait to hear more about that. Great. Yeah, absolutely. So I have four. Um, the first one I just said, hang out with other people that are prioritizing their needs, right? That will bring you up, learn all the time, learn everything you can. Maybe it's from those other people. Maybe it's books, maybe it's seminars, ask lots of questions. So learn, learn, learn. The third is take small, consistent action. So you've got this great big goal and, um, you kind of are at a standstill. So you've got to break that goal down. What I help people do is, is say, okay, you, you want to run a marathon, not just go out and start running, right? Let's get the shoes. Let's start really basic. Let's start at the most basic thing we can. So make it really small, get the right shoes, get the equipment, make sure you've got your hydration belt. Let's go out for a walk. Let's see how that goes. Or maybe, you know, maybe you're further along the line, but really make those moves small. And then progress, right? That goes along with it. That progression, that mindset of progression over perfection. So hang out with other people doing it, learn and ask questions, take small consistent action and think about progress being part of the win. I love it. That's, that's fantastic. And it, even just breaking down those tips is so helpful. Thanks. Um, so these are the realms here that most of the self-care falls into, right? We've got, or not self-care, most of the things that, that we want to spend our time on. I mean, we chose a family, we want to spend time with them, right? Um, and we have all these different goals and these are just some that, that might come up, um, to jumpstart that we usually need to find a little space and get quiet and figure out which one is going to be the most important. And that kind of brings me to, well, a, a, the deep health concept. Deep health is slightly different than just self-care because, well, self-care is part of that deep health web. Do you know what that is? No, I don't know. The deep health web. No, I've not heard of that. Okay. So the deep health web are all the eight areas uh, that we can identify that our life falls into, right? There's the relational, like we're here with a community um, being connected to people. And there is physical, like we want to get better at our nutrition and our health. We have all of that. And we've got emotional and an environmental, and all of these, right? So we're gonna touch on all these briefly today. And then some like the physical a lot. I think those are the ones that most people want to get tips on. So, yeah. So we'll do a deep dive into the physical. Yeah. Okay. Exactly. Great. Yeah. So here on the physical one, here are some ideas that people, you know, not some ideas, but some ways to take care of your physical health, like eating better, moving your body daily, drinking your water, getting sleep, taking probiotics and you name it, right? It's as individual as we are, right? It depends on where we are. Um, and we'll talk more about that later. And then we have mental health, right? Slowing down to quiet your mind so that you can then take the appropriate action. Um, this is an area that is super important because not only does it define for us what's important right now, or I call it WIN, W-I-N, <laughs> it can really de-stress us. So I think it's a great, it's a great practice to start to tune into your breath and to get quiet, even if it's only a minute a day, because we don't have a lot of time. Um, I do a lot of breathing techniques with my clients. Would you like to try one? Yeah, that'd be great. Let's do it. 
I have um, three queued up for us today. Um, from simple to a little bit more difficult, I was thinking we would, can you see my little blue cursor here? Yep, yep. Okay, great. I was thinking we would do the easiest one just all together, which is a relaxation um, breath to just reconnect to um, safety and peace, okay? So we would start here in the middle. I'm gonna have a cursor there and then you can follow along with your finger along that shape of the eight. So we're gonna start with an exhale here in the middle. And then we're gonna start breathing in, inhale. At the top and exhale down the side. Keep tracing it with your finger and take long breaths, inhale in. Exhale. Maybe relax those shoulders too. Can you see my shoulder tension? <laughs> no, we all have it. Inhale. Up again. We'll do one more pass and out. Maybe relax your jaw this time. Inhale all the way up the side again. And out. We'll stop here in the middle. How do you feel? Amazing how much of it just adding a physical movement and it helps you relax so much more it That's does interesting it does and there are hundreds of different varieties of these i'll call them meditations because they are they're they're mini meditations um that you can do and sometimes one works and sometimes another works and, and as you practice different ones you'll find some that that you can customize for yourself that feel better to you. So I like this uh, square breath as well. This one is great for me for falling asleep, for calming down before I go to sleep. So you would do an inhale for four counts. You try to make all your counts long and then hold your breath and then exhale for four counts, hold your breath and you keep going. And it just quiets your brain. You just stop thinking about all the things that are running around in your head and relax. And then the last one, rain, that's maybe more of a, um, that's more of one that's advanced, but I, I, or you need a little guide for and take a little more time on, but I love it for self-compassion because man, we're hard on ourselves when we don't get what we want, aren't we? <laughs> yeah. So, um, that's to recognize, allow, investigate, and, um, and you will feel so much better. You just really, um, are able to connect with your, connect to yourself as a friend. That's what RAIN is for. So uh, there's lots of ways, lots of ways to do it. You wanna go on to some of the other areas of uh, self -care? Yeah, let's do that. And um, I know you're gonna sort of, um, yeah, talk a little bit about some, some of these other self-care areas, but also um, help us kind of go back to the physical and kind of help us um, with some stretches and some ways we can really you know, in this kind of very sedentary climate and landscape that we find ourselves in these days. I mean, we're all just so much more sedentary. Yeah, um, we are. I've been a virtual work. So I know we're going to do some stretches together. So I'm looking forward to that as well. Great. Okay. Well, let's just pass through these pretty quickly then. We've got the emotional self-care and there's some ideas. I like highlighting the ones that, that most people are working on, but again, it's, it looks different for everybody. We have environmental, like changing the mood of where you are. Like if you're going to have dinner with your husband, you might light some candles and that changes the whole mood. You can do that in your office. You can do that anywhere, right? Financial self-care. Those are big stressors, right? Other things we want to take care of. Social self-care, connecting with people and family, setting boundaries. Recreation, that's one we all need and we all deserve. And then we have spiritual self-care, which is not necessarily about a religion, but it's about your core values and who you've become right now, right? Who are you? You, you are now. It's not who you were when you were 20. So that's important to figure out too. And that's in that realm. So, but let's go on. I know you want to, we'll move on to movement. That's yeah. so interesting. I'm so glad that you shared all the facets of self-care because you don't typically think about, I mean, I, you know, you don't always think about sort of you're a multifaceted person so there's so many elements to your personality and it's not it's spiritual and so all of these things are happening in your life so breaking them down I guess is the best way to start 
getting better about your own self-care is realizing there's all these areas of your life that you need to tackle. So, yeah. So as I said, you know, I think we're all, um, gosh, we're all just sitting a lot more. And so I know you have some great tips to help us kind of get up and get moving. And when we're kind of, you know, where do we even begin? Um, right. I know you have some t tips to kind of help us jumpstart um, getting up and getting more active. Absolutely. So if we've done our web here and we've decided that movement or that physical activity is the one that we want to concentrate on, and often that's what I do with the client is I'm like, look, here are all the realms. Let's pick one you want to work on. Um, then, yeah, that is that is that's what we'll concentrate on now. So knowing your purpose is really important, right? So we know we want to move, but why do we want to move? And how do we want to move? And when we see some fancy picture of somebody doing an exercise or something that looks unattainable for us, we aren't, we shouldn't put ourselves down and go, oh, I can't do that. Um, our purpose is to move, is to feel better. It is not to compare ourselves. So I, have a, I purposely put this picture of me doing this uh, pigeon pose when I was in the middle of my yoga training, because that is a move that I can't attain right now. I was in the middle of a 200 hour certification practicing all the time. So I can't expect myself with my priorities at this moment in time to be able to do that. And I just wanted to bring that up because I think, again, we can be so hard on ourselves or expect that um, or compare what we used to be able to do to what we can do right now. And what we can do is enough if we just build up little by little by little. Um, so I did want to say that, but you asked me, um, you asked me how to prioritize it or how, oh, how you wanted me, how to do it in a work landscape. That's what you wanted. Some examples of getting up and getting moving and, um, and, you know, how do you kind of help your clients who are sitting in front of their monitors all day or just more sedentary in general, you know, how, you know, give us some tips on stretches. Yeah. Um, all that good stuff. Absolutely. So taking in mind where the client is. And at this point, it's the client who is at their desk, which you said, and you have somebody who's working a lot. Um, I take in mind where they are and I go really simple. So what are the goals for that? The goals are to get some energy back in our bodies, right? To restore the blood circulation, to promote your energy and to keep mobile. So those are our goals. Oh, and relieve pain because man, when we sit down, you feel it all day, right? You're back. I don't know if you've ever felt that. Yeah. So then I give them guidelines, like, um, like don't sit all day, please do not sit, resist sitting there for two hours at a time, get up and move. And then options, like, do you want to get up every hour or every other hour? Right. So we set alarms for that, right? Let's set your phone alarm. Let's put a sticky note on your seat that allows you to, you know, come back from the bathroom and remind yourself that you're going to do um, that you're going to do some stretches or squats. Um, and then the other one is to drink plenty of water. So it's simplicity. Know why you're doing it. Make it small. And do it often. And drink your water. Those are the four. <laughs> So how much water? I know you have a great tip about how much water we should be drinking. So um, it's about half of your body weight in ounces per day. And so if you know, you're know 200 pounds, you're going to drink 100 ounces of water. That's a lot of water. I'll, I'll give you an example. First of all, I would always have a water bottle near you that um, you know how many ounces is in it. Because if you're drinking little cups or here and there, you have no idea how much you've had, right? Um, so get something that you will drink out of and, um, and start with that and, and just do one more every day. Right. So, um, I drink 75 ounces. That'll tell you how much I weigh. And that's three of these. I only have to count to three all day long. So that's, that's a tip. Make it simple, simple, simple for yourself. Yeah. Excellent. Okay, great. Well, let's show us. I, I would love to actually have you show us some some stretching. Yeah, let's invite everyone to do them with us. So, can we do a stretch? Absolutely. Let's start with um, let's start with the um, giveaway that we did when people oh, yeah. when people signed up. Um, 
if you're in an office setting, you probably don't want to get down on the floor and do these. So we will do them as if we're in an office, even though we might be in our home offices. I just like to give vari variation. Um, this way we can take it with us anywhere we go. Um, let's try this child's pose first. It's the first one right here, right? So if we don't want to get on the floor and do a child's pose, we just use our chair. I'll show you how. Let me I'll tip my camera down a little bit. Tell me if you can see me. Yeah, and I'll do it with you and everyone everyone watching. Let's all do this together. So this is a way to kind of relieve stress, right? Do some moving while you're, break up the monotony of sitting. Relieve your back pain. Bring energy to you. And um, you'll, you'll feel it at the end. So you're going to sit on the very edge of your chair. Take your feet really wide. And maybe give yourself some neck rolls just before you do that, because that'll feel really good. Right? Inhale your shoulders up and exhale them, <sighs> drop them down and then chin to chest. We're gonna drop our head down until it comes all the way between our legs. And if that's bothering your neck already, go ahead and put your hands on your thighs and let your head hang down. Take a deep breath in and exhale, maybe relax and release a little further. Perhaps your hands come down to the floor. The most important thing here is to keep that slow breath and to let the top of your head, don't look at me now, let the top of your head face the floor. So inhaling here, releasing and relaxing. One more time, inhale and let go. And then take your hands to your legs and slowly walk up your body. You might feel a little bit dizzy because, and your face might be a little red and that's okay. Um, that, um, how do you feel after doing that? I feel a lot, the, that really was a, a great release from my back. I mean, that I could feel that really. That's great. Release was really great. I'll have to, I'll definitely be doing this more. <laughs> And the cat and cow too, we can do the same yeah. thing with the cat and cow. We roll our back down and up and back sitting at our chair like that. So most of these can be adapted and I would use to a chair or to a seated position. Um, so I would highly recommend them. And some other things we, we might need are wrist circles, right? Or simply sitting in our chair and holding and twisting all the way around, reaching to each side, getting that back moving because it's our spine that takes all the brunt, right? And I absolutely love one hand up to the ceiling, one hand down on the floor, and then we switch. One hand up to the ceiling, one hand down on the floor. So really moving and getting those ribs to expand and that breath. So. Yeah. Let's move on to another favorite. That forward fold is a favorite one. It's very much like, I'll move back for one second. It's very much like our seated forward fold, only you get the extra added benefit when you're standing up of getting the backside of your body, the back of your hamstrings and calves, which also get super tight by doing it this way. So that's a great one. And if you can't accomplish it all the way with your hands down to the floor, see my hands are on the step there or on a chair, you just make it easier, right? And then I have one more favorite for desk workers. Strengthen your rear end mm -hmm. or strong, healthy, happy, pain-free backs. This is the best exercise you can do. Do it in the morning, do it at night. Start with 10 in the morning, the night, and each week do one more. Okay. Great. Well, I think these are some great, you know, small things that you can do if you feel sort of overwhelmed. How can I get up and start moving? These are some great ways to do that. Um, so thank you so much for sharing. Um, we can't really talk about self-care without really talking about nutrition. I know that's where we're heading next. And this is the really fun part, right? Eating, right? Food is, we, we all love to eat. So 
That's my favorite. Awesome. I know. So <laughs> would love to hear your tips for meal planning and maybe like a couple of your recipes. Sure. Sure. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, so I think the first thing you need to do when we're talking about nutrition and meal planning is, believe it or not, drink your water. Drink your water. When in doubt, drink your water. <laughs> and then we'll talk about the actual meal planning. How long does it take? Because it's a busy work week, right? We want to make sure it isn't very, it's very time efficient, that our ingredients are efficient, meaning that there are not many of them, and that hopefully we've had the chance to pre-chop them or pre buy or buy them pre-chopped, because that will help us with time, right? Budget is part of this too, because we can only do so much with our budgets, right? We might, we may be able to buy the pre-chopped, we may not be able to buy the pre-chopped, or we might do it um, once a week, just on a super busy day if we're taking the kids back and forth. So there's always ways to, to help ourselves um, and relieve a little stress, even if it's only for a day or two, it's still a help, right? Um, so it's, let's make it time efficient, let's make it easy, budget friendly, hopefully, and, um, and fun. I like making my cooking fun. Do you ever cook with other people? No, not really. No, it's my favorite. I do no, it on the it so good. Communal cooking. Yeah, I love it. I actually started a group in COVID that, that does it together. Um, and we did it online during COVID. And I would we would send out the recipe and we would all be online just like we are today. And we would do it. And it was it was a lot more fun to cook that way than you know being cooped up in our house. It was great. How about some of your favorite recipes? Well, let me go back just a second. If we've got the time um, for the busy families, I want uh, what I aim to do is help them to have a list of ingredients or a list of foods and recipes that they know they're going to shop for and only go to the store twice during the week. That'll save some time right there. Less back and forth. Right. Um, I only uh, we try to strive for cooking probably only seven out of our 21 meals. And that means maybe simplifying our breakfast to having two that we toggle back and forth between. Um, maybe three dinners. We cook three dinners a week and we cook in large amounts. We batch cook, right? So that if I'm cooking for myself, I wouldn't cook one serving. I cook three. One for me now, one for lunch tomorrow, and one that I might freeze, right? So per person, you might cook up to two or three servings per person, and that's going to really help you save time and hopefully um, de-stress a little bit, right? Um, what else did I want to tell you guys? Uh, oh, also, don't be afraid to use the um, all the meal prep services. Again, you can use them one day a week or one day a month. So tons of options out there. It is so customizable. Um, but when we are cooking, I said just a few ingredients at a time, if we use our fresh ingredients, not only are they beautiful, but, um, they're always tastier. And that just means we have to add less other stuff. So tastier, more healthy, and they look beautiful. You know why we eat the rainbow? I've always heard eat the rainbow. So, so why don't you explain? Cause I've, I'm not sure I will. I don't understand it completely I don't think I really really put it together or maybe maybe nobody did somebody just said oh that was good for you so do it but um this book this fiber fuel book by um Bill Wolskowitz he is a doctor and he talks all about fiber and he teaches people to eat the rainbow which I totally follow this I love it um because all the different foods have different types of fiber and that, and so your cucumber versus your tomato versus your avocado versus whatever, right? All the different vegetables and fruits have different fiber and fiber feeds our gut and gut, gut health is a big thing now, right? Everybody's knows about gut health and how important it is. So yeah. that will help your feed all those billions of microbiota in your stomach. And, um, and it, and let me tell you, let's see. I have this here somewhere. I I'm going to, it's the, it's the gut health that drives hormone regulation. It drives, um, it drives all kinds of things, your immunity, your cholesterol, your blood sugar. 
uh, your improved brain function. I think I need to eat some more today. And um, yeah, so, so get in more fiber. Americans get in, I think they said 11 grams, 11 to 13 grams a day when we need to be getting 30 to 40 grams of fiber. Wow. That in itself is a goal. I want to eat better. Well, how do you want to eat better? I want to eat less fat. I want to eat more fiber. I want to drink more water. So pick a goal, right? Um, I was, let's give you one of my favorite recipes next. Yeah, I was going to say, those were some great tips for you know, because we're all very, very busy. And I know one of the things I struggle with is meal planning when I'm just always so bit too busy to cook. So thank you for sharing those tips. Those, those are great. Yeah, you're welcome. You're welcome. And, and this is probably my top recipe that I used for ever. I finally, I just, when I was driving all over the place, this was the thing that saved me. You make it in bulk. The egg muffin recipe is one I took from Starbucks, actually. It is uh, spinach and feta cheese and sun-dried tomatoes. Super simple. You just put it in, mix all the ingredients in a gigantic bowl, put them in silicon muffin tins. They'll look even nicer than these do if you do that. These were, This picture was off the internet. Um, and um, then you can just stick a salad with it if you make it for dinner and have that as a dinner. Let the rest of them cool because now you've made two or three times what you what you need for dinner. Uh, stick them in the refrigerator, and then next day you can have it for breakfast. You could have it for lunch. You could have it for a snack. Eat at room temperature or microwave it. I love this one. It's so easy to switch up too. What if you want? You know, you want it like a quiche. Put ham and cheese in it, right? You want it to be. Asian, you could put um, little Asian vegetables in it with some soy sauce. It's amazing. So that's my favorite. Uh, protein smoothies, also super, super easy. It's usually just a milk protein powder, your fruit of choice, and you're ready to go. But you can make it very individual. You can put in chia seed. You can put in all kinds of things that make it tasty and change the flavor profile. Like you could make a dreamsicle one or a chocolate protein one. So there's some other ideas. So when you think of lunch, what do you think of? Probably sandwiches, salads. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, lunch can be anything. Lunch could be breakfast. If that's when you break your, right. It could be. And in fact, I've often eaten those, those, um, egg muffins for breakfast. I, you know, I don't get out of the, get out of the habit of thinking lunch has to be the sandwich. Lunch has to be this salad with the meat. Lunch can be leftovers from last night's dinner. That's how we don't, that's therefore we don't have to cook as much. Right. We don't have to spend that time prepping something different for lunch. Um, so I think that, you know, we just need to get out of our box of what is lunch or get out of our lunch box, we could say. <laughs> um, here's some ideas for healthifying uh, some lunch items, although you could have them anytime. This tuna salad, I make it with plain yogurt. Um, so you're cutting down the trans fats by not using your mayonnaise and you could actually take, add in healthy fat by that using the avocado. You could eat the avocado on the side or mix it in. Um, so those are some ideas. And then there's the no bread option, right? You just use the little tiny things, little tiny, uh, peppers to scoop. The more like a drip. Yeah. Um, also you can bring it to book club. There you go. It's the everything kind of thing. Oh, dinners. Dinners that can be hot and dinners that can be cold are my favorite. Um, so this is one of my, it's just got a nice, spicy, juicy flavor. And I love things like this that you can just add rice to if you want, if you've got a crowd or eat it just like that and carb free. Well, I know we're all hungry for more of your recipes. so. I encourage everyone to follow your social media handles because I know you post a lot of recipes on social channels, right? Mm -hmm. 
So yeah, great. And this is a great idea for dinner. Yeah, thanks. Um, this actually is up here just because I wanted to show some, some portions. This would be a portion say that my husband would eat. It's um, a more meat than maybe I would eat. And then a big salad. The plate is mostly vegetables and then some meat. So on occasion, we might have a carb on there, but that's why that's there. And I also wanted just to remind you guys that, you know what, I don't know about you, but at dinner time, I can be ravenous after whole days at work. And so the biggest tip I can give you, not the biggest tip, but one tip that I think has really helped people is to have a snack. If you're driving, let's say you have to commute from work is to have a snack in your car or to have a snack already on your desk so that when you're hungry, it's right there and you eat it at four or five or six o'clock. And therefore, when you're making dinner or eating dinner, you're not eating everything, right? You've had a little snack, have your nuts and your fruit. And that therefore that, you know, you won't be starving at dinner time anymore and you can have an appropriate serving size. Excellent. Well, I think you can't really talk about nutrition without talking about reading labels, right? And I know there's so much information online, but I, for one, get to the grocery store and I know I should read all the labels of everything I buy, but it's overwhelming. So do you have some um, quick tips for us? Yes. Oh, it's overwhelming. It, yes. It's, I mean, the aisles and aisles of yogurt these days, <laughs> it's crazy. Um, my biggest tip for food when you're shopping is to turn them around and look at your favorite one and then pick two or three others, turn them around and tell yourself, I'm going to, you know, I want to eat less sugar. The three ingredients you want to pay attention to when you're looking at better eating for you, right? Is less sugar, the one with the most protein and the one with the most fiber. So which one has the least sugar? That's the one. And it should have also hopefully more either one or the other two, either more protein or more fiber, but always go with the one with less sugar. That's in priority. You could um, like SPF, right? SPF for your skin, that's your preventative. That's my little acronym there. Your, pre your preventative for your skin is your preventative of eating poor food, right? You're gonna do SPF. Look for the sugar first, the protein second, and the fiber third. That's excellent. Boy, that makes it so much easier. Thank you. I, that, and so easy to remember SPF. That's great. Yeah, of course, it's different, right? For everybody, because everyone's goals are different. If you're a diabetic, you're going to be looking for definitely less sugar. If you're a heart patient, you've got cardio issues, you're going to do less salt and so on and so forth. You're trying to lose weight. You're going to look at the lower fat ones, but that's your general shopping. Thank you. That is, that's very helpful. Um, oh, and this is great. So this yeah. is fortune control stuff. Great. I love it. Thank you. Um, this is also simplification. I'm all about simplifying for less stress. We can always make it more difficult later. Or we can always add on later, but did you know that your hand is your hand and my hand? We're, you know, we're both women of about the same age and maybe about the same height, but um, our palms, might be slightly different thicknesses. And our palms are our portable shopping tool, our portable tool for knowing how much to eat. So I literally, when I used to work at the hospital, I used to take a pen, people always remember this part, and draw on people's hands, draw the biggest square I could get because, and say, okay, that's your portion. That's your portion of meat. That is three or four ounces of meat. And we are looking to get that in every single, um, every single meal, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. That's another nutrient that we tend not to have enough of. So there's your portion size for your meat. Yours is different than mine, even the thickness. And then you've got your vegetables as your fist, a cupped hand, which is smaller, right? Of your carbs and then healthy fat. Yeah. Again, great tips and easy to remember. I think that's, we've, we're all bombarded with so much information. So anything we you, you know, you've done some, some, you, you've made it so simple to remember. And I think that simplicity, you said, keep it simple and you have, and it's, but it's, it, it's in its simplicity, it's brilliant. So thank you so much. These are great tips. 
Thanks. Um, yeah, so I think we want to definitely have time for questions, but I know we're, we 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 also wanted to get to you know menopause and postmenopausal weight gain. So tell us a little bit about your certification and and some of your tips for for postmenopausal women. Yeah, I'm really excited. I finally got into a really prestigious um, program to coach menopause. And um, it's going to go really in depth. And I'm very excited for myself and for everybody else. And um, but here are some quick guidelines that I can share with you now. OK, so there are, we run it runs the gamut of all the different issues that we that we go through over the course of our lifetime and, and things we feel in menopause. So let's stick with the physical things that we could do. And that is get more sleep right? Which is not that easy when we get hot flashes. I understand that. And there are tips and tools for that, but that's one. The second one is strength train. Definitely want to strength train. And that's one that a lot of women have stayed away from, but I'm telling you, it's going to make you feel better and it's going to get you stronger and increase your, um, your metabolism and your bones. Um, <clears throat> What else do I have here for you? Uh, I have some other really great ones. Understand where you are right now, right? And get with somebody that is going to go through something thorough with you. Go through all of your all of your issues and really pay attention to them. When we're eating, we want to get 0.75 grams per pound of body weight of protein. Again, that's different for each of us, but I'm being a little more specific now because we're talking about menopause, right? So like I said, at least that handful, it might be more for you or me. Um, your beverage intake, take a look at your beverage intake, less sugar, less caffeine, more water, <laughs> and slow down when you eat. That helps with satiety, right? Um, the strength training, increase your daily movement. Um, I think we went over the sleep and the stress and that's, that's, that's the quick down and dirty. <laughs> Love it. Oh my God. I'm sure we could talk about this topic for a long, much longer, but those are some great, you know, things to keep in mind and some great tips for those of us who are at this stage of life, uh, and, and, you know, struggling with it. And so, yeah, thank you so much for sharing that. I think this, the certification is so interesting and, um, I'm, I'm excited. nice to, to see that more people in the medical community are paying more attention to postmenopausal women, right? Finally, yeah, absolutely. Uh, right? So I know that we have some questions coming in and tips coming in that we'd love to share with everyone. But before we do, give us like your quick sort of key takeaways. All right, key takeaways. Um, adjust your attitude, <laughs> right? Don't, don't <laughs> that's an easy way to say it, that's it. Um, but don't compare yourself to other people, right? And respond to um, respond to failure differently. It's about how what we could learn from our experiences rather than, oh, it didn't go well, right? Practice that pause. Practice one of those exercises, that figure eight or something like that. Practice quieting yourself um, to investigate what's going on when that when that stress, that flashing button happens. Um, simplify your plan when you figure it out, what is that you want to do, simplify it so that it's so easy, you can get it done every single day. And then next week, maybe do a little bit more. And then absolutely get support because the difference between saying you're going to do something and making it happen. I mean, there's huge statistics on this, it's it's gigantic. And when you have support and you have somebody that you're going to meet, then you're going to reach your goal. 95% of the people who do that reach their goal as opposed to 10% who just say they're going to do it, right? Um, and I think that's it. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, Sonia. I know, as I said, I've been seeing these great questions coming in. So I am going to thank you again. And I'm going to let Kathy come back on and share uh, some of the questions that we've gotten from our audience and also some tips. So Kathy, take it away. Thanks, Chris and Sonia. I have pages of notes that I've written as you were going through um, 
just for things for me, which I thought were really important, but I won't go because it's not all about me. I wanna to get to some of the questions in our chat box here. And so um, one of them is how a question about nutrition and budget, how important is buying organic? Ah, well, or well, that depends on a lot of factors, but I would, if, if it were me, I would choose the thing that I eat the most of, like for a family, maybe, maybe milk is the thing that you consume the most. Organic can be expensive, but so choose that one thing and, um, and go organic with that. The answer is, is there are, there are no hormones in organic products and that's going to be better for you. I know pesticides and all those things are known to be bad. So pick the one thing that you do the most and try to go one little bit at a time. That's what I would say. Okay, excellent. Then there's a question on, um, <clears throat> there's quite a few questions here. I'm just like, so at the end, you're going to share your recipe. So I'm not going to talk about that right now, but what are your thoughts on intermittent fasting? Ah, intermittent fasting is wonderful for some people and not so much for others. Again, know yourself, know your body, start small. There are so many different protocols. I have actually done them myself. And I can say that, you know, you have to come to a place where you feel comfortable and it's working for your body. It can give you tons of energy. I mean, it is a wonderful thing, but remember, it's not a starvation program. You should be eating in that eating window. I wish they called it eating windows instead. I, I wish they did. But um, it, it can be a wonderful health tool to help reduce inflammation and all kinds of things. So I never say no to somebody if they want to do something and want to try it. I want to know why we're going to try it and we're going to see how it works for them and try and tweak it. And if it doesn't, it doesn't. That's OK. OK, good to know. Then there's a question um, for the palm of protein. How high, please? And I think you said the width of your. Yeah, basically the width of your of your palm. Now it's skinnier here and wider here. I don't know if you're hungry, eat that big. And if you're not, you know, it's it's an average. And I am an intuitive eater, and I I I do try to 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 ask people to be more aware of how they eat and how they're feeling in their food. So go ahead and make that a a fudgeable between here and here. That's okay. I did not like the fast one, um, the fat, because this is not a scoop of ice cream, but I'm just saying that. Ah, I like that. <laughs> You're right. You're right. <laughs> okay. Um, another one. Thank you, Sonia. Do you have any tips for self-love, especially moms with young kids and being consistent of self-care? Oh my gosh. Yeah. So mommies, teach your children that, um, that you need to love yourself first. And you need to, by doing your own thing, by saying mom needs a little bit of time to, I don't know what you want to do, go to the movies with your friend, read a book over here, whatever it is, um, that is just so important because you doing it for yourself is showing them what, what they need to do and how, and how to calm themselves, maybe even get them into doing a little bit of that breathing with you. They're teaching it in elementary schools now. So that's an idea. And there's breathing exercises were great. Just the, the eight, all of them worked really nicely. But let me get back to some more questions. Um, great information, Sonia. How do you cut back on coffee? Any suggestions for an alternative rather than water? Oh, yes. Okay. So again, it depends on why and how important, but you could go to half caffeine first, right? Um you could try, um, there are, there's a tea and I'm not remembering the name of the tea now. I can get back to you if you want to email me. I will get back to you. There's a tea that tastes pretty good. It's not coffee, but it's pretty good. There are also other products out there. Um, I believe that you can get that have natural ingredients. Arbonne sells one and, um, and they give you energy if you're looking for the energy. Depends on what it is in that caffeine that you're looking for. Is it the energy or you don't want to feel that buzzy feeling anymore? Or yeah, so there's an idea. Okay, um, I'm a tea drinker, so I, I highly recommend tea. <laughs> 
Um, how often do you recommend resetting your goals for movement? For example, should you yoga one day, walk one day, et cetera, or change monthly? Um, I like to cross train. So if, if um, I would always set the cardio is the most is, is not the cardio, but the movement and the 10,000 steps ish is the most important. And then um, if you want to do something different every day, you can do something different every day. But as far as re-evaluation, I'm not sure if I understand the question, um, your body will adjust to what you're doing. So I say switch it up about every three months. Okay, well, but cross train as you're going through. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, um, then there's one here on, um, how about premenopause? Uh, is there a resource that addresses premenopause? Many times women do not even pay attention to premenopausal symptoms as it is so less talked about. Right. Um, yeah, you can go to an entity called Girls Gone Strong, or you can go to um, Precision Nutrition. All of them will go through, or you can even go to, um, I don't remember the name of it right now, but those are two of them that you can go to and see. If you're looking for, am I in perimenopause or am I in menopause? There is no exact um, you can be going through it for a long time. And even the doctors have a hard time saying one thing or the other, if you're having hot flashes and you're bloating and you've got two or three of the symptoms, you're probably in it. Okay. So, um, unfortunately we have two minutes left. So I just want to thank you, Sonia. Like I said, I have pages of notes that I took, um, really informative for me and everybody on the group chat. I won't go through all the comments, but they were all glowing. And thank you so much from the stretches to all the information you provided. Um, I just want to do say for MCB, want to thank everybody for attending. We will be having another Women in Business series in the fall. Uh, so we will send out information for that. But Sonia, I want to give you the opportunity in our last minute, minute and a half to um, close up because I think you had some things you wanted to, to tell our participants. Yeah, yeah. Well, first of all, thank you, everybody, for being here. I'm so excited and honored that you're here. And second of all, I hope you got something out of it. This was a really quick run through a bunch of topics and it's self-care is important. So if you're feeling motivated and you want a little more mojo and keep it going today, to keep it going, I'm going to invite you guys to pre-register for my goalkeeper summer camp that I'm going to do. And I'm doing it purposely Ju July 17 through August 17 vacation season because it is to support you to taking imperfect action. In other words, not all or nothing. We're not going to stop and start. So hopefully you can just reach out to me via email and say, yes, I want in and I use Facebook or Instagram and then we'll set you up. Great. And just for all the participants, we will be sending out a thank you email and uh, we'll include some of Sonia's recipes and things in there that she's mentioned previously. So just want to, again, thank you so much, Sonia. It's been a fast moving hour. I really enjoyed it as I'm sure all our participants did as well. So we're going to say goodbye and hope everyone has a good afternoon. Thanks so much. Thank you, everyone.